is the love of God in prayer. The love of God in prayer. So I'll just simply do this tonight in such a way that I believe that it's going to permeate in your spirit. The most important thing you need to know about what Pastor Darlene was speaking about on Thursday night in terms of Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, was the fact that how to show God you are worthy and or you are a worthy investment this year. This coming year, whether you are believing in the Jewish customs in terms of their year, which just about has started, it's the days of awe. The days of worshiping and praise. We'll be touching on that as we do every year. Hallelujah. Some of the things that we know that we love in terms of the customs of the Jewish people, which God gave them. And remember, servants of God, that Jesus was a Jew and he did not change not one thing in terms of the customs. He taught us to enhance those very things and to embrace them because we love the Lord. So then the thing that we want to really expound on then tonight is what I've been talking about in the past. What's next? You need to ask yourself that question, what's next? Because as the new year is here in terms of the Jewish customs, and as the new year is here as it approaches us this year in terms of the Protestants or the world's customs in terms of America. We need to say to ourselves, what next? What is next for us? Well, we talked about, if you remember, we talked about tomorrow, that we're not to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has its own troubles. And we do not worry about tomorrow's troubles, do we? So then you'll say, well, what's later then, Pastor? What's later? What's, what's, what's next? What's tomorrow? What's later then? Well, we're going to make that destination cho choice. And we're going to make it happen through Jesus Christ, through the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the final stage, what's now? What's right now? What's, what's in front of you right now that you need God to move, that you need God to touch in a special way right now? Somebody say right now, because you know and I know you need right now, right now, prosperity. Father God, send now, right now, send now, prosperity. Oh, Father, we beseech you in the name of Jesus. As Pastor Darlene mentioned, some people in this hurricane season has lost a lot. And when they lost a lot, they had a lot. But Job lost a lot as well, so we need to be concentrating on what we have and what God has for us. The Father's love is so significant to us, it's so important. This is why I wanted to expound on it tonight in our own lives. How should we move in this? The question I asked was, what's next? We know we don't have to worry about tomorrow, do we? Well, then what's later? And then what's right now? John, the book of John, talks about it this way. He said, the Father, the Father loved the Son and has given all things into his hand. I love that particular scripture because it says, the Father loved the Son and has given all things into his hand. But what did Jesus do with it? He gave it to us. Everything that Jesus had, he gave to us. Before he left, he willed it to us in the New Testament. And that's, my friend, my dear ones, is the truth. That is the gospel truth. He willed it to us in the New Testament. Then he goes on further to say in John, Father, I will that they also, meaning you, me, whom thy has given me. In other words, Jesus said he only came for those that the Father has given to him. I'm always amazed at that because we think Jesus came for everybody. No, he didn't. He only came to those whom 
the Father gave to him. He says it in the book of John, chapter 17 and 24. He says, Father, I will that thy also, whom has given me, be with me where I am. In other words, we will be with Jesus where he is, that they may behold my glory. Whose glory? The Lord's glory, which thy has given me. Notice this powerful love of Jesus, how he engrafted us in. And that love is for all that accepts him as our Lord and Savior, which thou has given me, he says, for thou loveth me before the foundation of the world. So even before the foundations of the world, Jesus was considered to be the love of God. And then he says, as I spoke to you in the past, because I wanted to bring this home tonight, because it needs to be something that you bring into the new beginning, the new year, a new commandment. A new commandment, he says, I give then unto you that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Notice this love, this love of Jesus is one of the most powerful things there is. Jesus is love. So then when we accept Christ in our lives and we take on Jesus, we take on this love. One of the things that you know I repeat a lot in terms of scripture is the powerful scripture that he says in Beatitudes. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are even to love our enemies. We are to simply bless those that curse us, do good to those that hate us, and pray for those that despitefully use us. I use the scripture a lot, especially when I'm not feeling that great, somebody, because it, it lifts me. It lets me know that if Jesus could love me, in spite of all of my shortcomings, all of my downcomings and shortfalls, then I should be able to love everybody. I should be able to do, do greater works in the ministry because he said, I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Somebody say, how can I do that? It's very easy. I just gave you the scripture to practice and you'll find yourself loving just a little bit more. I love the way the psalmist had to deal with it. And we know how hard the psalmist was about things and about his enemies. He says, thy compass me about also with words of hatred. Notice the enemy. And fought against me without a cause. Notice again, the enemy. But what did the Bible just tell us? That we are to love our enemy. For my love, he says, for my love, this is the psalmist, this is David. For my love, they are my adversaries. But I, somebody say I, give myself unto prayer. See, you are to pray. This is what I've been emphasizing the last couple of weeks. You are to pray. We are to pray ye one for another. Because that is the Father's love. That is what Jesus intended for us to have. I notice one thing, saints of God, you are a child of God. Romans 5 tells us this. It says that we being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But by whom also we have access, I say, we have access by faith in his grace, wherein we stand, we stand, dear ones, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So then, what did we say? The just, the just then, lives by this faith. But this faith also has the power of love. We must walk in love because love covers a multitude of sins. Notice God simply forgave us because of his love. If he did not have this love, 
he could not have forgiven us for our sins. Therefore, even for us to forgive our sins and to forgive others of their sins, we must have love. You must walk in this love. Love must carry you even into forgiveness. When you have love, it's easy, it's easy then to forgive because love then covers a multitude of sins. Ecclesiastics talks about it like this, and walk then in love as Christ also has loved us. So we have learned and are learning yet still how to walk in love and then how to walk into forgiveness. But then this love also gives us the power of faith. And this love also gives us the power of prayer. This love is a powerful thing. We know without love, we can do nothing because the Bible tells us, Paul talks about this love. You can be a powerful man of God and one that speaks a lot of tongues and all of those things, but without love, it profits nothing. We know now that love is also required in the things that we must do and the things that we must desire and the things that we must have. For love then covers a multitude of sin. And if we walk in this love as Christ did and has given himself unto us an offering and a sacrifice to God for the sweet smelling savior of his life. Because of this, because of this, I tell you, and second, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Now our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and God, even our Father, which has loved us and has given us everlasting consolidation, or I should say consolation and good hope through grace. I love the word hope because hope the Lord is. So then I know if I keep my hope, I'm hoping only in God. If I keep my faith, I have faith only in God. So then if I have love, I have love because God has given me all of these things because of his love. The devil gives fear, but God gives love. When we can tap into that, then we can move forward in whatever he has for us. So remember, we started out and says, what, what's next? Love. What's now? Love. What's later? Love. We do not have to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has troubles. So if we take love in tomorrow, then we need not worry. Oh, somebody, isn't that good? So we need to also embrace Christ this year in love. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven talks about it this way. He says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear then, but the power in of love. I love that word power because that is something that we need to push forward. We need to attach the spirit of power to everything that we're doing. Because if you think about power, power, if you look at it from a generic standpoint, power is the same thing that they use to power a rocket. The stages of a rocket has power. It has a boost. It takes them into another sphere, as I like to say, another part of the atmosphere, a higher level. Power. This is what we require from God in order to take our love to the next level, in order to take our faith to the next level. We need to understand that because of this power and of this love. Because he says, again, I say to you, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and of love and of sound mind. So don't let the devil deceive you and tell you that you don't have a sound mind. Don't let him send his fiery darts to you. You put on the whole armor of the Lord and think on what? These things. Think on what is true and noble, hallelujah, and pure. Think on what is right, admirable, and lovely. Think on these things, I say, Think on what is excellence in God and praiseworthy. Then you'll find yourself in your heart set right toward God. You'll find yourself in your heart with love. You'll find yourself with God in faith, walking in confidence in what you need and what you desire 
I tell you, I say to you, God holds no good thing from you, but do you have what he has already given you, the power, the faith, and the love to use, I say, in Jesus Christ. So again, 2 Timothy talks about it like this. His four, there is laid up for me, oh, somebody, henceforth, I need not worry. Oh, God, that is so good. Bless you, Holy Ghost. Henceforth, he says, there's laid up for me and you a crown. Jesus, oh, saints of God, let the Holy Spirit move on that. Henceforth, he is laid up for me a crown of righteousness righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but to un all of them all of you also that love his appearance my god saints of god i am so blessed by god tonight because all i had for you tonight was love i didn't have much all i had was love and god said to me that is truly enough. So therefore, saints, you are blessed, I say, and highly, highly favored in love. Glory to God, dear ones, and thank you tonight for being so blessed. It didn't take me long to tell you simply that I love you. It didn't take me long to simply say that Jesus loves you. In Jesus' name.